the middle of the night in a graveyard in the holy city of Karbala. So yeah. You spent a lot of time in Karbala. Do yeah. You come in Muharram. Yeah. You can sit down if you're scared. Bismillah. Yeah. You spend a lot of time in the city, but you spend a lot of time in the graveyard. No. Is this the first time you've come here? First time in the graveyard of Karbala, yes. But not Najaf. Najaf I've been. Why did you go to the Najaf one? Visit family, the Marhumeen who are in the graves. How many Marhumeens do you have in Najaf that you visit on a regular basis? On a regular basis? Oh, I can say maybe every time you come, you must visit them. Yeah. Grandparents, aunties, uncles? Grandparents, aunties, uncles, cousins who, you know, were taken by the old regime and, and killed. Yeah, about 10, 15. Quite a few. Anyone you lost while you were still alive, you remember them? Yeah, three of them, actually. That? My grandmother and my grandfather and uh, a cousin of mine who was taken very early. Taken? Very early. When was he, did he pass away? Passed away about two years ago. Why? What reason? What was of a heart attack. Of he was only, I think, 38 years old. He lived in Iraq or in the UK? No, he lived actually in Denmark. Close to you? Yeah. That must have had a huge impact. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember being in our garden and I'd just come back from work and I promised my mother that I was going to have dinner with her. Time was around 6 p.m. Summertime, quite hot, so it was nice to stay outside in the garden. And my younger brother runs into the garden and he says, you know, our cousins just passed away. And any time you get the news of anyone passing away, it's kind of like this... Kind of get this empty feeling where everything around you is silenced. Everything that anyone says, just, you don't, you don't really process it. You're just trying to process what you've just heard. And when I got news of my cousin passing away, it was only a few months back that I'd seen him. And just remembering how we used to sit and we used to speak and laugh and break bread together. And, and then to think that he was brought to a place like this where you look to the left, you look in front of you, you look to the right, you look behind you. These are all family members of people. These are all brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles, grandparents, sons, daughters, cousins of people. Death doesn't know age. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. We, we live in, you know, me and you are good friends, alhamdulillah. We alhamdulillah. live in the West. Do we, do we think enough about death, do you think? Does death cross our minds? Or is it only when we come here that we remember death? Or only when someone passes away we remember death? Or only when we attend a funeral we remember death? Do you know what? Do you want stuff As you know, I am a university student. And I do live on my own because of how far it is. And sometimes at night, I will sit there. You know, I'll just lay in my bed, everything's dark. And I just... <coughs> I just look towards the end of my room and I just think, what if a figure was to appear in front of me? What if medical mode will come into my room what if that thing over there is actually that's it that's that's the stamp of my life that's the thing that's just gonna 
It's just gonna take my life away from me. How is my mother gonna find out? What is my mother's reaction going to be when she finds out that her eldest son has just been has just died? Or sometimes, sometimes, in fact, most of the time, I would sit and just look. And then I'll look at my phone that's charging, and I just think, what if... What if I get a phone call from my younger brother, saying... <laughs> if I get a phone call from my younger brother saying, Mum's just passed away. لا عذب الله أمي إنها شربت حب الوصي وغذتني باللبن وكان لي والد يهوى أبا حسن فصرت من ذي وذا أهوى أبا حسني Those lines are written about the mother and how she fed you with the love of the wasi with the love of أمير المؤمنين سلام الله عليه and how it became part of your life and ran through the veins, ran through the blood in your veins. That hope, that wilaya that you carry today is from your mother, no doubt. You, the first thing you said to me, Minhal, when you remembered death, when you sit in your room and you remembered that maybe my time has come, the first person you worry about is your mother. But what if it was, and I'm sure the first person she worries about is you as well. The saddest yeah. news is for someone to get. But most death is haq. Yeah. May Allah prolong your mother's life. And your mother's too. And everyone, everyone's mother's lives. Why did it impact you when you mentioned your mother? What's, I, I repeat, may Allah prolong her life, but you know, Death is the truth, and one day we will get that call. One day you'll wish, Minhal, you'll wish that your it says mom on your phone. You wish you get that phone call from mom. Do you know, you grow up, and you're so, you're so unappreciative. <laughs> your mother, your mother, your mother. You're so unappreciative of everything, everything. That late phone call in the night. That that one time she didn't buy you something. Or that one time she said no. You're so unappreciative. But then you sit and think. <laughs> What if that call comes in one day? And you grew up in the lap of your mother. You grow up. And your mother's the one that takes on all your anger. Every single thing that angers you. That sometimes you take out on your mother. And her doors are still open for you. Her doors of <laughs> her doors are still open for you, and she's always there for you. And whenever you want to apologize, whenever you want to hug from her, she's always there for you. But once... <laughs> Have one, you... Minhaj, one, yeah. You cry a lot with your mother. When you mentioned your mother, you cried a lot. Yeah. Have you been good to your mother? Is something upsetting you? Oh. Are you scared? Because the Prophet says your mother, your mother, your mother. Paradise oh, yeah. lies underneath the feet of your mother. Do you think you can face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say you've done your bit for your mother? Have you upset your mother? 
Good. Have you been good? Alhamdulillah, I feel like... I feel the satisfaction like of your mother is very important, Ramadan yeah. Walidin. Yeah. Have you done your part? I feel like there isn't anything we can do to fulfill that part. But I feel like I've... I've always tried to... You know, sometimes our parents... They ask for things, and sometimes you feel like you don't have the time. But I've always, I've always wanted to keep this principle is don't raise your voice at them. Have patience. Make sure, make sure that whatever your mother asks for, or your father asks for, that it's fulfilled. Because... One day, they won't be here. And that's a scary fact for anyone. Anyone who's lost a mother, I can't even imagine. I cannot imagine. What they went through when they heard the news, I can't imagine what must have ran through their mind. But I always try to ask my mother, are you happy with me? I always try to ask her if she's happy with me. Imam Zayn al-Abideen says in his Risalat al-Hukuq, <laughs> then the right of your mother is that you should know that she carried you where no one carries anyone. And she fed you with the fruit of her heart, that which no one feeds anyone. And she protected you, minhal with her hair, her sight, her hearing, her hands and legs and her skin and all organs that she had. She was highly delighted to do so, Minhal, to protect you. She was happy and eager, enduring the harm and the pains and the heaviness and the grief until the mighty hand of Allah expelled you out of her and delivered you to this world, Minhal. Then the Imam says something that's beautiful. She did not care if she went hungry as long as you were eating. She did not care if she was naked as long as you had clothes. She did not care if she was thirsty as long as you were drinking water. She did not care if she was in the sun as long as you were in the shade. She did not care if she was miserable as long as you were happy. She did not care if she was deprived of sleeping, Minhal. How many nights do we leave our mothers deprived of sleeping? She did not care if she was deprived of sleeping as long as you were sleeping and her abdomen became your abode and her lap became your seat and her breast was your supply of drink and her soul was your fort. She protected you from the heat and the cold of this world then you should thank her for all of that. Then Imam Sajjad, you said this earlier, you said whatever we do is not even enough. He says, you will not be able to show her gratitude unless through Allah's help and Allah granting you success. This is the haq of our mother upon us. If you wanted to speak to your mother one last time, May Allah prolong her life. What would you tell her, Minhal? <laughs> Minhal, I want you f to forget that there's th that we're doing this TV show. Forget that. You know what? We can't even see the cameras because of the darkness of the night. I want you to speak to your mom. I want you to speak to a Minhal. What do you want to tell her? Maybe you won't have another chance. <laughs> يا <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Ya wala tayo ni Abwa. Ya Abwa min amr ala amr ya Abwa. Ya Abwa. يبوا لا تعرفيني يبوا يا الله في لونج هاي لاي You know when you when you remembered your mother and in Iraq, Fatimiyah is one of the biggest seasons. It reminded me of Imam Hassan and Imam Al Hussein alayhum salam when they bid farewell to their mother Fatima. I ask that anyone who's watching that their mother's protected, their mothers. You know, we might not get another opportunity. There, there could be no... You know, tonight, as I said, you know, sometimes... And people have asked me, they said, where did you film this show? And, you know, I'm filming it in a graveyard. This is not a setup. This is not a studio. We're actually in a graveyard in the middle of the night in the holy city of Karbala. We're not, we're not doing these shows just to... It's not entertainment, no, no, no. It's doing these shows to get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, get you closer to the Ahlul Bayt, and get you closer with this episode to your, to your mother, to your father. If your mother is still alive, I mean, how can vouch for this? If your mother is still alive, make sure tonight you go and kiss her feet, because that's heaven lies underneath your feet, under the feet of your mother. That paradise that we aim to achieve because there's one aim in life is to purify the self and to try and enter paradise make sure you look after your mother Minhal, when you remember the masaib of fatima al zahra alayhi salam you remember imam hassan and imam al hussein alayhi salam and you remember sayyida zainab and them losing their mother at a young age Imam Hassan was probably seven or eight years old. Imam Al Hussein was was six. Sayyidah Zainab was probably five years old. Yeah. How difficult do you think it was for the Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam, Hassan and Hussein alayhum salam, to lose their mother Fatima al Zahra? What comes to mind when you remember the masaib of Fatima alayhum salam? You know when I sit here. And I see this man digging a grave in the middle of the night. I think, was this your case, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen? Allah. Is this how you were digging Fatima's grave as she lay in front of you? You know, the narration says that some of the companions like Salman and Ammar and Abadar, they helped Imam Ali bring the coffin. But when they reached that secret location that we do not know, Imam Ali told them to go. He said, now leave me with my beloved wife. You can go now. I just want to speak to her. Then he said, Assalamu alaikum ya Rasool Allah wa ala Peace be upon you, O Messenger of Allah, and peace be upon your daughter, who hastened to reach you, who has gone so quickly after you. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, I have returned that amana that you gave me. And you're right, when we see this, we remember Amir al muminin and the burial of Fatima. That secret location that no one knows except our awaited Savior. What pain did Imam Ali go through, Minhal? What pain did Imam Ali go through when he dug a grave all alone, just like a night like this? 
in the city of Medina he was, in that se secret location, he dug a grave. No matter how close we are to our mothers, no matter how close we are to our fathers, our siblings, spouses, I don't think the connection was as strong as the connection between the Ahlul Bayt amongst themselves. No doubt. Me remembering my mother, I couldn't speak. I was choking up when I was speaking. I can't imagine. You know when people say I can only imagine? Mm, I can't I imagine. Know. What Amir al Mu'mineen went through. <laughs> when he took the final scoop of dust out of that grave. <laughs> when he takes that final scoop. Because up until then he's got time with his beloved. But that final scoop of of soil he takes out. So the moment he puts her in, and then on top of that, to the moment he finally pushes that last, that last stone, or that last piece of sand on top of her grave. And do you know what's more worrying? <laughs> it's the fact that he had to turn his back at some point. He had to turn his back at some point and walk away. He had to walk away from this grave. You know, one narration mentions that in a specific night, and this is going to break your heart, Minhal, because I know about that connection you have with that lady that's buried in the outskirts of Sham. One night while he was sitting next to her grave, and you know what? We weren't planning to speak about Sayyidah Zainab or Sayyidah Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. This episode literally took us there. While he was sitting and reading Quran, he fell asleep. And then Fatima Salamullahi alayha came in his grave and she said to him, she came to the dream of Amir al muminin and she said, Ya Ali, wake up, go to Zainab. She's all alone. Minhal, Minhal, you are here every year on Shama Gariban. And you feel that strange feeling, that Ghorba feeling in Shama Gariban after Ashura. How do you think Zainab was feeling when she was all alone on the 11th of Muharram? And Imam Ali was not there to protect her. The father of Zainab, who always wanted to protect her, was not there on the 11th of Muharram to protect her. <laughs> this... This... This amount of light... I had never seen Zainab alayhi salam. Allah. This time. <laughs> no one would see Zainab. Never shut on the face of Zainab alayhi salam. In front of anyone. This very same thing. Was thrown on her tent. This right here, thrown on the tents of Zainab. <laughs> you were supposed to burn Shibr. You were supposed to burn Yazid. You were supposed to burn those who went against Awliya Allah. Tents of Zainab. <laughs> you engulfed the 
<laughs> you burn the feet of Sukade. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Min Hal, you've had the honor of being here in Karbala to do the live shows in Muharram. And what an honor. The last few years, you haven't missed Ashura in Karbala. And the narration mentions whoever comes to visit Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam on the eve of Ashura and spends the night in Karbala. It's as if he will be resurrected with the companions of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. On the day of judgment, it's as if you were with Habib ibn Madahir, as if you were with John, with Abis ibn Shakir, with Nafi', with Burair, with Muslim ibn Awsaja. Just being here in Karbala. Tell our viewers, how do you feel when you get chosen to be in Karbala for those 10 nights in Muharram? It's, it's always a pleasure to have the opportunity to to show Karbala to the world and to show to show the to show the service of the lovers of Hussein but I remember I remember when I once got a phone call by a brother in Italy whose wife was on her deathbed yeah she was on her deathbed and he was crying and and he said to me he, he didn't even speak to me he said I want to speak to my grandfather about Abdullah because he was a Sayyid and he spoke to his grandfather and he said, Ya Aba Abdullah, my wife is in your hands. <laughs> and he was crying and crying and crying. And we said, Salaam Alaikum, Salaam Alaikum. Next day, he calls in. And he's full of joy, happiness. And his wife had miraculously <laughs> recovered. The doctors were astonished he was in disbelief but the moment that tipped me over the edge was when his wife spoke to me on the phone as she poured her heart out and cried her heart out to Abba Abdullah Al Hussein thanking him now Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah I can only say Alhamdulillah that I'm healthy But I don't think I've thanked about Abdullah enough. We haven't said shukran ya Hussein enough. We haven't said thank you ya Hussein enough. When he makes that list of all the names of the Zawar, over 400 million Shia in the world, Sheikh Mustafa. Over 400 million Shia. Yet, only a couple million make it during Ashura, during the, the tough days. During the days where, when we sit in Karbala and we look around and we see the buildings and we see the free roaming Zuwar and you think just a thousand odd years ago, this was a bloodbath. The purest of blood spilt all over this land. 
And then you think, how lucky am I to be on that list four years in a row? How lucky am I to be here for the fourth year in a row on these ten nights? Do I deserve it? Out of 400 million, I don't think I'm... I don't think I deserve it. Manhal, on the Day of Judgment, each group will be called with their leader, with their Imams. As the Quran mentions, we will call every group with their leaders. Manhal, I want you to imagine it's that day and those that call themselves Khaddam al Hussein, the servants of Hussein, are called. Minhal, do you think you'll be one of them? Do you think you'll have the honor to be one of the servants of Imam al Hussein? For us, at Imam Hussein TV3, we think you've served Imam al Hussein, and hence why I want to honor you with this flag of. Imam al-Hussein from the Dhariq of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. Please accept this gift. And with it, <laughs> a marble that has, and this I got specially for you, Minhal. Because I know this year, me and you, for the first time, for you, went to the shrine of this lady, Zainab alayhi salam. So the marble that I've chosen for you, says on it, Ya Zainab al -Kubra. <laughs> You know the pains of Zainab. And this is also for you. <laughs> Minhal, it's the day of judgment and that's your grave. Are you ready to face it? I think I have the strength to just go in there. Thousands dead. From whichever angle I look him, there's someone who had a soul once. <laughs> 